Enrique. Enrique, welcome to London tonight. Thank you. Are you going to get some time to play in London or are you just here to work? I'm just here to work this time. But next time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a few days off. At least one day off. Do you get to come to London a bit? Do you know it quite well? Oh, um, I was born in London. You were born in London? Yeah. Wow, I thought you were born in Miami or somewhere exotic. No, I was exotic. born in London. I moved when I was two days old. So you were a Londoner? Yeah. Well, I'm that's something I, I was didn't born know. In oh, I, was, I really believe that. I was that. born, I know you did. But I was, I, you thought I was born in Miami, I was born in Madrid. Oh, okay. Spanish. I knew it began with an M. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very close. So, do you know London quite well? Do you go out here? Do you have your favourite club, your favourite yeah, restaurant? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I go out, but most of the time that I come here, I, I, it's mainly, mostly work. That's not much fun. I know, but I, it's obviously the happening city. Is that your life, that it's just mostly work, or is it just when you come in? When here? you travel, yes, unfortunately, yes. And what happens is you travel so much that whenever you have a few days off and you're on vacation, you don't want to travel. Mm. You want to stay at home and sleep in your bed. This new album, mm. it sounds to me like it was a struggle for you. You worked really, really hard on this. <coughs> I did. It was one of those albums that drove me nuts. It gave me anxiety. It, 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 it was crazy. But um, at the end, I truly believe it was worth it. I actually I feel good about it. I feel... I feel confident. Uh, I enjoy it, and and hopefully, you know, uh, the uh, uh, my fans or, or the people will enjoy it as much as I do. You wrote fifty odd songs. A lot of songs. A so lot, basically, lot you wrote songs. about five albums. Uh, uh, a lot, yeah. Because I also did a Spanish album too, so I, I wrote like crazy. So that's why it took so long, because it took years to get this together, didn't it? Took it? Three years. So when it finally comes out and you're out here now and you're speaking to people about it, it's like one of your children. This is a real labor is. of love, isn't it? It is, it is. And, and sometimes, but you can't get too sentimental with it at times because you'll go nuts. Because if they ask you anything that ha doesn't have to do with the album, you're like, what do you mean? What about the album? Um, but um, I put out many hours in, on, on this album. So um, it, I was saying before in an interview before this that it, it's given me a lot of energy and, and mainly because I feel like it's, um, I feel confident about it. I believe in it. I enjoy it. So that, you know, when I'm doing an interview, when I'm traveling around the world, it, it makes me want to kill for it. Don't kill me, please. No, I mean kill for it. I mean, <laughs> work-wise, not, don't worry, I will not kill you. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> so I want to talk about the title because this title is quite significant to you, isn't it? You don't sleep very well. I is that don't. just because you have always got work on your mind? Was uh, it just during this album, or no, no, no? It's I've always had tendency for that uh, ever since I was a little kid. Um, I think it's also kind of genetic in my family from my mother's side. Um, but I just, unfortunately, sometimes, uh, like last night, I I must have slept like an hour. You know, especially when you have those. Those shows that start like at six in the morning. I just can't fall asleep because if I fall asleep, I won't even make it to the show because I'll fall asleep at five. So where do you get the energy to do your work? Where do you get the energy to step out on stage if you haven't slept? Uh, drugs. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe nothing you say I now know. after the London guy. I know, I know. Uh, after the London what? When you told me you were born in London. Oh. Yeah. Um, what I do is, I don't know, you manage. You manage and you, and you, you, get, you get through it uh, as, as, as good as you can. Sometimes it's very difficult. Uh, usually what happens to me is your defense mechanism goes down and you, just, you get sick and your body just gives up. I'm very sorry to hear that. No, we I'm need to okay. sort it out for you. We need to get some kind exactly. of cure. I'll think about that. I need to start some yoga, some kind of thing. You do. Yoga, hypnosis. Hypnosis. I heard about hypnosis. Yeah. I don't know if I believe in that. I've been to three doctors and one of them tried to hypnotize me and it didn't really work. Maybe he wasn't the right doctor. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe we'll find you someone that yeah, will work for. I actually told me about someone here. In the meantime, let's talk about you as table tennis champion. You like to play ping pong. I am. I mean, I mean, I do. I am. Is this, is this <laughs> I am. I am a table tennis champion. 
Is yeah. this a lifelong thing? Have you always played table tennis? It's not the coolest of sports in the UK, is it? Are you kidding me? No, is it? What's so uncool about playing table tennis? Well, I guess in the UK you kind of associate it with men in very tight shorts and tight t-shirts and moustaches. Table tennis? Yeah. Oh my god. That's not how I play table tennis. <laughs> no? How do no. you play? Do, tell me the cool way to play table tennis. The cool way to play it is with a G-string. And, okay. and, and absolutely, that, that's the only thing you got to wear. Okay. Well, you playing table tennis in a G-string possibly would sell it to a female audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only way to play it. I'm kidding. Um, the o I never knew it was a dorky sport. Mm. First of all, it's not really a sport. I mean, I don't want to say that because I'm sure there's table champions out there saying, what are you kidding me? Of course it is a sport. It obviously takes a lot of precision. But nowadays they call poker a sport or they put it on, the, uh, on, on sport channels. So um, I, I think I wouldn't be ashamed of saying that I play ping pong. I like it. I used to play ping pong every single day with my brother after school. And in the, in the studio we had a ping pong table and we'd play all the time. So is that how it happened? Is that how the sample got onto no, the track no. that you were just playing? And no, I mean, it's a, it, it's a real sample of, of, of someone playing ping pong, but it's not, that's not how it happened. Okay. The video for the track, the ping pong track, kind of plays on, I guess, what the media perception of you is, the suave, sort of sex symbol guy. Do you enjoy playing with that? Do you enjoy playing with the media perception of you? Yeah. I do, and I, and I kind of did, I wanted to make a, a video where kind of, you see a little bit more of my personality. I don't, I was saying in, in prior interviews, I don't, I don't take myself that serious. I love what I do, and I respect what I do, but I truly don't take myself that serious. So I wanted to incorporate that uh, in the video. Obviously, most videos, you know, you do the treatment, there's always a girl boy a lot of times, or 90% of the times. So I, I knew this video was going to have it so if it was going to have it let's let's play it off a little bit and and and, and show the, the the funny side of it is it hard to keep your feet in the ground you say you don't take yourself that seriously but you're an incredibly successful pop star you've got people surrounding you all the time telling you that no and people that surround me do not tell me that all the time no luckily people that surround me is that what keeps your feet me in the ground then and slap me around and tell me the truth and they're good friends and i trust them and um, they would never lie to me, um, and I always lie to them. And they would never tell me uh, any type of BS. They truly wouldn't. Uh, I, I really mean that. Uh, and and that, thi uh, that, I th that, I think, is, is uh, very important when you're an artist. Because it, it can really uh, screw you up. Mm. So you think that's the vital ingredient, to have somebody who slaps you around? No, I mean, to that's keep your feet on the ground. The final ingredient is to have the right song. Then uh, the rest is, is also very important. The other stuff we, we just talked about. Are you very proud of what you've achieved? I guess you must be because you've, in, you've achieved an incredible amount. And you really set out to do it alone. When you first started sending out your tapes, it was under an assumed name. You've, you've achieved a lot. Do well, you look back and think, yeah, I'm really pleased with myself? No, I, I'm, I'm happy and I, and I feel very fortunate. Um, I cannot complain. Um, I've, I've, I have a great job. I, I truly do. And uh, I don't take it for granted. And I know perfectly well that the same way that I'm here today I could be gone tomorrow. So I live one day at a time and I, and I try to do my best and I put my best effort and I put a lot of obviously the interviews and all of that I'm not telling you obviously that's not my favorite thing to do in the world or in, that goes with this job um, but I can tell you that in my music and in my albums I work like crazy for it to be as good as it can be well, thank you very much thank it was you. lovely talking to you thank you thank you Enrique.